determine the components of a reaction at the supports. So we want the reactions at A and B and C. And we know that A and B will each only have a vertical component, and C will have a horizontal and a vertical component. And we have the diagram to work from. Again, it's made up of these two members uh, I'll call AD and DBC. So instead of drawing the external picture, I'll jump right to drawing the individual member's picture. The order I do it in doesn't really matter, but what I'm looking for, what's going to help me as I'm doing this by hand, is if I have a member that has only three unknowns attached to it, that means I'll be able to solve for those three unknowns right away. And when I'm doing it by hand, the sooner I can start to get numbers, usually it's going to make everything a little bit easier. So when I'm drawing my free body diagrams, the one with three is the one that I would prefer to start with. So I'll start by drawing that first member, AD, because it has only three, and I'll be able to solve for those unknowns. So external forces that are acting on this, uh, here I have point A and point D. I have an eight kip force acting between A and D. And that's two feet, four feet, and six feet. I have another external force acting on this left end here. 30 degrees from the horizontal of, uh, from the vertical of four kip. At A, I have that roller, AY. And D, it's, I'm isolating it from the member it's attached to and from the ground that it's attached to. So at D, I have a pin connection. So I'm modeling what did member DBC do to member AD. It's a pin, so I can arbitrarily say I have a DX and a DY. And I'll say DX is right, DY is up, and it's a pin. So it allows rotation at that point, so there's no couple at that point. In the previous problem, I drew my first free body diagram. And then I, I went right to drawing my second free body diagram. Here, though, I'm going to do it a little bit differently because, as we could by inspection see, this free body diagram only has three unknowns in it. So I would say we're probably better off solution-wise to start writing equations and solving for those unknowns, then go to our other free body diagram that we know we're going to need because this doesn't have C in it, nor does it have B. But we will be able to get A right away. So my equation step, I'll jump right to my first picture and writing its equations. All right, if I start with the moment at D, it's a pin. The only unknown I have will be AY, so I'll be able to get AY right away. This will be 8 times 2 from the H kip force, and that's clockwise around, uh, counterclockwise around D. Minus 6AY. And then this four kip force is going to have a horizontal component and a vertical component. The horizontal component will have its line of action pass through D, so it will not contribute to its moment. So just the vertical component will. So the vertical component of that four kip is going to be four cosine 30, since the vertical is the adjacent leg to the 30 degrees. And that is going to be acting a total of 12 feet from point D. And this vertical component of it is going to be creating a counterclockwise moment around D, which will be positive. Because we start with the moment equation, AY is the only thing I do not know. And I can right away get AY. AY is going to be 9.59 kip. Uh, 
We assumed it was up and it was positive, so our assumption was correct. Ay I have, and actually, I could have also started with some of forces in the x direction would have been okay, because only one of my unknowns has an x component. In the x direction, I'll have dx to the right minus 4 sine 30. Only unknown then is dx, which not asked to solve for, but we'll see it's crucial for the next step. dx, I get 2 kip. Uh, and notice what these internal forces, like D in this one or uh, B in the last one, I'm arbitrarily selecting a direction here. And when I get my answer, I'm not, it's not necessarily two kips to the right, because it really depends on which member am I talking about. It turns out it, it is pulling this one to the right, but in the other picture, it's going to be pulling it to the left. So it's really those external reactions where I do, where I can say the direction that they're impacting my member. The internal ones, they're going to be equal and opposite by design on the two members that they act. Finally, moving on to three, I'll have a y, dy, which I now know, minus the eight, plus four cosine 30. Again, the vertical component of the four, the eight, dy, and ay. I know dy from equation, uh, sorry, I know ay from equation one. So the only thing I left I don't know is dy. And dy, I get 1.87 kip. Remember, ad is done. I can now draw dbc. Starting with the external forces that act on this, I have a 12 kip force. And that's at a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And I have a couple acting at point B, uh, 15 kip feet. Those are the only external forces acting. Then I have my supports, external supports at B and at C. I have that roller at B, which only exerts a vertical force. An external pin at C, I'm just going to say, has a CX right and a CY up. And one internal connection at D, again, I will harp on this. It's appearing in two pictures. I selected right and up in my picture number one. So automatically, that means I have to draw this one left and down. Doesn't matter what numbers DX and DY are. I ignore the fact that I already know what their values are. It's all based on the variables and the drawings from picture one to picture number two. It did turn out they were positive, but that doesn't matter when I'm drawing my free body diagrams. And that then for number two is my complete free body diagram. I know what dx is, I know what dy is. So I could start either with summing forces in the x direction, which that's where I'll go first because the only thing I don't know at this point will be CX. I'll have a negative DX minus 3 fifths times 12 from that applied load plus CX. From equation 2, I know the numerical value for DX. So plugging it into my equation 4, the only thing I don't know is CX. And CX will be 9.2 kip. And that will be to the right, since I assumed it was right, and it was positive. CX is taken care of. Uh, CY I don't know, and BY I don't know. So since there's two vertical forces I don't know, my best next move is going to be taking a moment. If I send forces in the Y, I would still have two unknowns in it. If I take a moment, I am best off taking it about a pin here. So either D or C. But because I don't know CY or BY, if I take it around C, that's going to eliminate one thing I still don't know, the CY. So taking the moment around C, 
CYCX will not be in this equation. I'll have the vertical component of the 12 kip force. That'll be 4 fifths times 12. The vertical component's perpendicular distance to C is going to be 8 feet. And the vertical component is going to be causing a counterclockwise or positive moment around point C. So this will be positive. The horizontal component has its line of action pass through point C. So that will not contribute to the moment around point C. I'm done then with the 12 kip force. Moving on to point B, I have BY acting. That will be 16 times BY, and that's going to be clockwise around C, so negative. I also have this couple, this 15 kip foot couple, acting at point B, so that also will be included in this equation. It's already a couple, so it does not get multiplied by a distance. It's just 15. It's already in kip feet. And what I want to be careful of when I'm dealing with moments, make sure everything has the correct units. This is in kip, 4 fifths times 12 kip, times 8 feet. 16 feet times by will be in kip. The 15 is already in kip feet. And then finally, I'm going to have uh, dy causing a moment around point C. It's going to be 24 feet from point C times dy. And according to my picture, it's going to be creating a counterclockwise or positive moment around point C. Now I can put in, I know the value of dy already. So the only thing I don't know is by from equation 5. By, I get 8.54. 8.54 kip. And that is up. And actually for A, Y, and B, Y, they both have to be up because the roller can only push on the beam. It can't pull on the beam. So B, Y, B, X, or B, Y, A, Y are both positive, or they are both up, I should say. And finally, the last unknown is the value for Cy. At this point, I can take the sum of forces in the y direction. Minus dy plus by plus Cy. And then the vertical component of the 12 kip force, which is pointing down. So minus 4 fifths times 12. I know dy from equation 3. I just found the value for by. That means the last thing I don't know is cy. So cy, I get 2.93 kip. And that is pointing up.